So um, when working on this problem, ladies and gentlemen, again, I asked you guys to factor. So when you guys are factoring this one, basically, ladies and gentlemen, you see that I have a trinomial and a trinomial. Now, what we have learned when factoring is I'm going to go over this two different ways. I'm going to go through the long way, so you guys can make sure you understand that. And then I'll go through a shortened way, which we are hopefully trying to get ourselves to. So what we are trying to factor is x squared minus 5x minus 6. Okay? Now, if you guys remember, the standard form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. Does everybody agree with me on that? So the way that I taught you guys how to do this, Brianna, was I said a times c <laughs> over b. And what I want you to do is identify what two numbers multiply to give you a times c and add to give you b. You guys should have multiple examples of that diamond all over your notes. Okay? So now, in this case, you see that a is equal to 1. So 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, and b is negative 5. Would everybody agree with me at this point? <laughs> literally no math has been done so far. We literally have just written in our standard form. And that's what everybody should at least be able to get to this point. Now we get to the little bit more difficult part, where I'm asking you to identify what two numbers multiply to give me negative 6 and add to give you 5. And this is where it starts getting confusing. So we've got to think of numbers that multiply to give you negative 6. Well, if they multiply to give you negative 6, that means 1 has to be negative and 1 factor has to be positive. So does anybody have the idea for this one? Yes, Nick? Negative 3 and 2. Good. Negative 3 and negative 2 add to give you negative 5, but they multiply to give you positive 6, though. I said negative 3. So it's cute. What did you say? Well, not the, but that negative. one won't work either. either. You added a negative. negative six huh? Negative so that's a very common one, though. It's, it, they add to give you negative 5, but in this case, your answers are negative, negative six, and 6 and positive 1. Okay, now. Um, so remember, guys, we're, trying, we're talking about factoring, right? We're talking about taking the area and rewriting the, area, um, the product. So when Colin does this, what I did is I created a box. Now, you guys can think of this as a box, and then I'll show you guys the shorter method, OK? The shorter method is creating a box where you write in your, your first term and your last term. And then instead of writing negative 5x, I'm going to write negative 6x and negative x. Because does e or positive x, right? Sorry, positive x. Because does everybody agree that negative 6x plus x is the same thing as negative 5x? Yeah. Yes? So now I have this box. And remember when we do factoring, we're finding the side lengths of the box, right? So sure. let's just look at the upper left-hand corner box. What could my side lengths be for x squared? X, x. x times x. Good. What could my side lengths be for x times what gives you negative 6x? Negative 6, right? Because x times negative 6 would give you negative 6x. Six and then x times what gives you x? Plus 1. So therefore, would you guys agree that x plus 1 times x minus 6 is, gives you the area inside of that? Would you guys agree with me? So guess what this is, guys? This is your factored form. That's the factored form. So x plus 1 times x minus 6. Yeah. Which one? I don't remember giving you. No, no, no. You, no, I told you it was wrong when you guys went to solving. I said you couldn't solve it. That's not what we're doing. That's what I said was the incorrect part. I didn't say that your factoring was wrong. I said the solving portion was incorrect. Okay? Because that's all you're doing. It's just factoring it right there. Then can we factor 4x to the fifth? No, we can't factor that. All right, so now let's go to the next one. Is there anything that x plus 2 has in common that I can factor out? No. So I'm going to leave that as x plus 2. Now, on this one, we have another one to do. But this one I'm going to do a little bit quicker because I want you guys to understand some patterns that are happening. And the patterns that are happening here is, first of all, a times c, when a is 1, you just have c, right? So I don't need to write a times c. I can just write in 2, 3. Now, I look at this again, Nick, and I'll give you another shot. What two numbers multiply to give you 2, add to give you 3? Multiply to, give you, multiply to give you 2, add to give you 3. 2 and 1. 2 and 1. So you'd write 2 and 1. Now, rather than having to do the box, which is perfectly fine. If the box makes sense to you and that's what you can do, then use the box. But 
what I want you guys to notice is, do you guys see how these numbers are what these terms were up here? So I don't need to go through the box. When a is equal to 1, these are your factors. So I have x plus 2 times x plus 1. Okay, And now what I want you guys to see is now I have every, every single expression is multiplied by another expression. So do I have any terms that are exactly the same in the numerator yes. and the denominator? Yes? Uh, x plus 2. x plus 2 and? x plus 2, and then x plus 1, and x plus 1. So my final answer is x minus 6 divided by 4x to the fifth. Is everybody following me with that? Did you? Good job.